You see that blank screen right there? That's the game we're making. No models whatsoever. Nothing. Kaput. Just sap. That's the only thing that this game has. A game even a blind person could play. So let's get started. A game with absolutely no visuals. This got me thinking of all sorts of crazy ideas, from sound-based memory games, to audio-based stealth games, even echolocation navigation. Hello? 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 And a lot of these ideas would work, but one idea kept coming back to me. You see, the problem with most of these game ideas that I was coming up with is that they may be annoying to play. Picture this. Say you start up a Flappy Bird game, and there's no visuals. It's just sound effects. But here's a bird for reference. And you just press a button, and hopefully your character doesn't die. But then he does die. And then you have to learn, like, okay, there's an obstacle there. And then you go in and you press some more buttons, and then he doesn't die this time, you know? But it would all come down to memorization, or annoying, extremely repeated exploration. And most of these ideas would be very slow to actually play. And that's not what I wanted for this game. Even though you won't be able to see anything in this game, I wanted it to flow very naturally. And the idea that seemed to solve these problems was a turn-based game. Within a turn-based game, you can have action and intense gameplay, while also giving players some leeway to process all that is going on. And in a game where you can't see anything, I thought, that's where I want to take it. A turn-based game with a compelling story to drive the action. You start up the game, and it begins with a story. There's an explosion nearby. That was close. Darius, assess the damage. Yes, Captain. All systems are up and running except for visual communication with HQ. Good. Our commander can still lead us. With your guidance, let's end this attack once and for all. And you are that commander. You're the commander of some sort of military squad, where you are still communicating with them and giving them orders, but you have no visual communication with them. Hence the game. Lost visual. But what does a game like this even look like? Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get to the gameplay. So this game is going to be completely built on voice acting, sounds, music, and ambiance. Which you already got a little taste of there. But what voices should we actually use? What sounds should we use? How loud or soft should those sounds be? In any game, these are factors to consider. But for this game, it's all the more important. I first started brainstorming all the different types of feedback you're going to need. I'll have to have all the normal sound effects that games have, like attacking, getting damaged, music, etc. But also, every single game mechanic needs some sort of sound associated with it. And they all need to be useful. Every time you select something, or have a different attack style, or conveying how much health your characters have, what's going on, who's going, everything. But before I can implement any of that, I need the core game mechanics in place, so that the game is actually a game and knows when and how to play those sound effects. So I started development with getting the basic game mechanics in place. Started with creating a simple turn-based system involving different game states. Depending on which state you're in will dictate what actions take place. So you start in the start state, which basically does housekeeping, sets up everything, and then you have an intermediate state that decides where to go next, depending on certain variables, either going to the player's turn or the enemy's turn. And then, of course, you can either win or lose. And in these states, you're either happy or sad. And so this is pretty much the backbone of this turn-based game. But already, I was running into a problem. Let's take a look at this intermediate state. I was bouncing back and forth between a few different things. At first, I was going with a turn meter system, where each character has a different amount of speed that makes them go quickly or slowly. But as you'll see later on as well, the problem I was facing was having an information overload. If characters have turn meters, then you should probably know those turn meters with some sort of feedback. Like most games have a turn meter bar above a character, but with an entirely sound-based game, you just have to say it. This character has 80% turn meter, while that character has 35%. And if you have, say, six characters, that's a lot of voice lines to play, and also a lot of voice lines to remember. And so I decided to scrap the speed of characters entirely, and to have them go in a uniform queue each time. 
Some turn-based games work like this anyways, and it eliminates a lot of the information to listen to, while keeping the core game mechanics the same. And speaking of core game mechanics, let's talk more about the entire driving force of this game, the sound. Your soldiers are battling an enemy, and so what are they attacking with? I decided to go with sound waves to fit the theme. You'll select different sound waves for your men to use, and each enemy will be weak to certain sound waves and resistant to others. And the enemies will work similarly. I wanted each sound to be unique and sound cool, but I wasn't really sure what to call them or how to differentiate them. And so I did some googling and found nothing. But then the idea came to me, like a dove descending from heaven. Use and combine different music genres to create interesting sound waves. So I came up with Clashtian, which is classical and Christian combined, and Punok, which is a shortened punk rock, and Dubrun, which is like dubstep but faster, and Opry, which is opera and singing, and last, Takuzik, which is a shortened version of techno music. And with these in mind, I can start brainstorming different ideas about what they should sound like. But for now, let's talk about the controls for the game. The goal of this game is that even a blind person can play it. So I wanted to be very mindful of the controls. And I thought, technically, keyboards have a braille system built into them. The F key and the J key both have a lip to distinguish them. And so that was my starting point. I decided to go down the line on both sides, having S, D, and F control which sound wave you've selected, and the J, K, and L key select the enemy that you want to attack. That way, even if you're blind, you could easily use the controls. And then of course, space is going to be the attack. And originally, like the turn meter problem, I was going to have the A key and the semicolon key tell you the information like your character's health, the enemy's health, turn meters, etc. But information overload was strongly to be considered, and I felt like it was going to ruin the flow and immersion of the game. I was originally planning to have your character say how much health they had left, and how much damage they took. Ugh, I took 237 damage and then 505 health left. But as I was developing, I was realizing, what's the point? Why does the player need to know the character's health exactly? In most games, you have a health bar, and you often don't even pay too much attention to actual damage numbers. If you are blind in a game, why not limit the amount of information that you possess, and why not make you have to use deduction skills, like a real blind person would have to? which led me to just having oofs ah, ee, ooh, instead of damage numbers. And based on the oof that you hear, you'll know if you did more or less damage. That way it's more about deduction rather than just having all the information laid out at your feet. I came up with three different characters to make up the squad that you're controlling. The captain, captain ready for combat. The tech specialist, that is here. And the comedic relief. This isn't exactly how I imagine my death. I wanted to give them all different personalities as well as have them sound different enough. I don't claim to be a voice actor, but I did have fun creating these characters. The captain, I wanted to sound in charge, have a direct voice, and be a little deeper. And then Darius, the tech specialist, highly intelligent. And then of course Omri, just happy to be here, kind of like those old shows that just have a funny character that doesn't really take himself too seriously. And let me tell you, making oofs for all three characters, where you want the oofs to sound different enough from each other character, but also distinguishable enough to tell how much damage you're taking, was an interesting experience. Let's just say I recorded a lot of different oofs over the course of this game. And not only that, but of course being a fully sound-based game, there were a lot of voice lines to consider for all the characters. Dreaded tomorrow targeted. Grab a bar in the grave. That enemy is already destroyed. That run selected. Captain up. Grab a bar engaged. All the characters' voices, as well as the story of the game, had many iterations. And I made lots of little tweaks, but these were the ones I settled on. And of course, what about the enemies that you face? Well, I wanted to leave it a little open-ended. I don't describe the creatures that you face at all during the game, except for what your characters call them. Lemeloc, Grebabor, Tredetmore, Heliopod. All you have is your imagination and the sounds to guide it. I also made all the creature noises myself, as well as their grunts. 
Which means I ended up making even more grunts. I tried to give each creature a little bit of a personality with them, having later creatures sound more intense and threatening than others. With all these sound effects and voice lines, and the game being built around them, this game was a lot different to develop than most games I've made. The only feedback that I had was either in the console, or on the sidebar, or within sound effects that I had already put in the game. And so until all the sounds were actually in the game, it felt wildly incomplete. I just kind of had to imagine the sound effects being there before implementing them. In fact, I didn't even have anyone test it until the end. I usually have people test my games periodically, have people play them just to make sure that they feel good or flow well. But with this game, I didn't really have anyone test it until right when it was finished. How does someone who doesn't know what's going on know what's going on without the sound effects? With most games, you can see what's going on, and even if it's not a complete game, you can kind of get the gist of it. But with a completely sound-based game, it just didn't almost make any sense to have someone test it. So it was a very interesting game to develop. And in a game development project, you always end up running into unforeseen problems when coding and making games. And here's just a few fun ones for you to enjoy. Some of you may enjoy spamming voice lines in games, but this was a little ridiculous. Grab a bar engaged. Lemma mock selected. Grab a bar engaged. Lemma mock selected. 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 Grandma mock selected. Grandma grandma mock selected. Grandma 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 mock selected. But you can at least tell what's going on now. On the other hand, this is a little too game breaking. You can attack as many times as you can press the button before your turn ends. Attacking! Attacking! Speedrunners get a kick out of mechanics like this, but I think I'll have to get rid of it. Sorry, speedrunners. Move a couple lines of code below others, and it's no longer a problem. You already had a little glimpse of the story. With your guidance, let's end this attack once and for all. And if you want to play the game without any spoilers to the story, there's a link to the game in the description. Otherwise, here's a few spoilers for you. I wanted to keep the game intense. So I kept the script pretty short and to the point. I went through many small iterations of the script, but the core story always stayed the same. Your squad, as well as the squads around you, couldn't hold the outer defenses. But we're getting overrun down here. We cannot hold the outer wall. We have to fall back. Darius, get us a stat on how the other squads are doing. And somehow the capital that you're defending has been attacked already. We need to get to cover. We cannot hold out here. Look it, the capital's in flames! Now we're really dead, aren't we? I'm not getting any signals from the other squads. Leaving you and your squad the sole defenders against your foes. And if you noticed, I went with some orchestral music for the game. I felt that it really fit the theme, as well as it gave it an intensity without drowning out the voice lines. I didn't write the story to fit the music, but after implementing it, I feel that the music peaks and becomes more intense at just the right spots. Yes, Captain. It's not looking good. Signals from other squads are in distress mode. This isn't exactly how I imagine my death. We're not dead yet, but we might yet be the capital's last hope. I have four different battle pieces to ramp up the intensity as you progress through the game, with the final fight as this. We're almost to the capital. Wait, what is that? The readings are wild. We have no data on such a creature. Whatever it is, it looks angry and a little bit ugly. You don't want to talk. Holding ground, man. And with the story out of the way, the only thing left was to finalize the sound waves. If you're an expert in any of these genres, then don't take any of them too seriously. I've never made any music myself, but for this I wanted to. I didn't want to just take a clip of some piece of music and then use that or necessarily just use some random sound wave that didn't reflect the names that I'd chosen. 
so this was all new territory for me. But for Clashtian, I went with a simple church organ and some strings. For Punnock, I created a simple drum fill. For Dubron, I did my best to create a little clip of some dubstep-ish music. For Operin, I just had some fun singing and making some things up and settled on this. Which sounded like it could be an attack. And for Takuzik, I just did a bare bones little techno loop. I wanted them all to sound different and be their own unique sound effect, while also sounding like they could be an actual attacking sound wave. You know, it's funny to picture someone playing this game in public. Picture this. Someone sitting at the computer, staring at a black screen, just playing the game. And someone walks behind them. And they're pressing buttons and looking super intently at this black screen. And the person walking by is just like, Okay. You do you, I guess. And this is how the actual game is going to look. While you play it. Pay close attention to the sound effects and the oofs and see if you can deduce which ones are doing more damage and which ones are doing less damage, just based on the sound. Heliopod targeted. Clash damage selected. Ready for commands? Tabran selected. <laughs> Omri ready for combat. Operan selected. Captain up. Panox selected. What do you need? The Kuzik selected. Heliopod taken out. And if you want to get the full experience for this game, I would highly recommend playing the game for yourself. The link is in the description. Otherwise, if you want to see the smallest game in the world, just one pixel, then click on this video. Moose, out.